Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with uh, book four, chapter four of The Dragon Prince. Uh, Mystery of Erevos, if you want to add in the subtitle. Um, so last time, Ezrin gave a great speech. The Dragon Queen loved it. Zim is just happy to be there. And even Rayla's, you know, hanging out. But shit's also going down because Claudia barely managed to succeed with um, Terry's help in stealing the staff and getting away with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty wild. And with the, with the length of the season, it's like, you know, it couldn't stay like peaceful for long. <laughs> um, it, it just wasn't possible. So it's like, it, this seems about the right point for th things to shift up. Um, I, I guess we're just going to have to see what happens. I mean, not really any big theories at this point. It's just kind of up in the air. <laughs> Uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But, in the meantime, uh, we're just gonna get on with this. <sighs> After I yawn, of course. <laughs> we're just gonna get on with this and see what this episode has in store for us. So, when the screen fades black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> Um, save for the Veer and stuff, which, as I mentioned in the reaction, I was not a fan of how they seem to be handling this. Like, like they're, they're showing, like, maybe, maybe the bare minimum of him still struggling with it. Like, showing him, like, telling Terry to get a grip, but that's just because he's racist. Like, he, he, he just hates Terry because he hates elves. He ha hates all non-humans so it's like that's not even that's not even a reasonable argument to make like he would have said that no matter what it's I, I, it's just they're trying to make him seem like he's regretting more than he reasonably should be at this point it just it makes no logical sense. It does not work that way. It's just... I'm sorry, but no. I don't believe it. I, I don't for a second believe it. And I, I see... I have absolutely zero sympathy for him. I, I, I do not care at all. I still want him to just go away, to just die. Because he should be dead by now. This entire thing with him coming back in the first place is kind of stupid, if I'm being honest. I think it would have been better if he had stayed dead and Claudia would have been seeking revenge for him. That would have made more sense. That would have been a lot more logical. Instead, no, we're just going to bring him back from the dead. It's like, that's, that's lazy. It's lazy. And stupid. And I hate it. Anywho. Um, after the message that uh, was delivered at the end of the last episode, Dragon Queen decides, oh, it's time to go. But she accepts Ezrin and the others coming with her to formulate a plan and get everything figured out. On the way, she tells uh, those riding on her, um, which is Ezrin, 
and Rayla, as well as Zim, um, about the history of Erevos. How he was highly respected and beloved, but it was all a ruse, that he was, in truth, a betrayer, a turn, excuse me, a turncoat, and that he was manipulating mages to turn tides in his favor. So all the dragons kind of came together after fighting for a while and decided to put an end to that by creating this magical prison that they not even knew the location of to hold him for eternity. Unfortunately, one of the dragons had, uh, well, all the dragons had their own clue, and one of the dragons had specifically a looking glass, a mirror, that allowed him to keep an eye on Erebos. Viren, at some point, stole that mirror, and this allowed him to be able to communicate with Erebos and eventually lead to where we're at now. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Erevos was able to figure out how to escape from his prison, and he's been, and thanks to Viren, who he was able to, well, manipulate, um, he, he was able to get that going. Though, to be honest, even if he didn't manipulate him, Viren would have done it anyways, because it's fucking Viren. Like, let's be honest. It's ironic that he's racist against elves, yet is actively has actively been working with one. It's like he's doing it for his own needs. He's doing it for his for his own desires. Like if Erevos wasn't manipulating him, he would be trying to manipulate er er Erevos. It would still be happening. It's just oh my god. And now Erevos is basically just sending a declaration of war, practically, towards everyone who was watching at the Looking Glass before shattering it, and basically saying, you can't stop me, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> it's like, what are they going to do? Like, as the Queen said, he's a being from the stars, I, I guess you could compare it to the Collector from Owl House. Um, he, 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 like, the dragons knew that even together they couldn't stop him otherwise, outside of imprisoning him. How do you stop what appears to be an immortal, celestial being? Basically a god. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean... Funny enough, you could really compare this to the Collector, because the Collector was trapped kind of for the same reasons, although the Collector's entrapment was on false pretenses, but still. Um, and obviously Erevos is a lot wiser and, you know, not a child <laughs> like the Collector, but still, there's there's definitely some comparisons here. Um, they're both godlike beings with insane power and basically invulnerability um, to the point of near immortality. Both of them were imprisoned um, by other beings of exceptional power. And both of them are eventually freed by or because of evil villains. Erevos because of Viren, even though it's more Claudia enacting it at this point, and the Collector because of Belos, even though it was King who actually enacted it. But it was still because of Belos's actions that he was freed. So, yeah, there, there there's very much some similarities there, interestingly enough. Um, except the biggest difference is the Collector is actually fucking likable. <laughs> um, Erevos just scares me, <laughs> if I'm being honest. 
Um, but I don't hate him like I hate Viren. I actually, I actually do like him as a villain, um, because he's not just this detestable piece of shit. He's, he's cunning. He's smart. He's interesting. His, his confidence and, and everything is just so investing. He, he's, he's a good, charismatic villain. Viren is just a shitbag. Who probably smells of old cheese. It's just, I just, I don't like him. I don't, I don't like him. <laughs> he, he's just such, he just needs to die. He just needs to go away. I'm sorry, he just, no. I, I don't, I don't want him around anymore. But the biggest question now is what's going to happen next? I'm thinking that Erevos is going to be released at the end of this book, at the end of uh, book four. And then the next season, which is coming out in this summer, is going. that's going to focus on after his release. And him trying to take over and probably succeeding to some degrees. Uh, but but I don't know for sure, obviously. I guess we'll just have to see. Um, there was one other point to mention in this episode. And that was the camp. With, with the elves and the humans and everything. I mentioned it in the reaction. I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but it's like their fight and their refusal to, you know, listen to each other is just going to cause more strife between them that we can see is already there and, like, Janai's brother is already perpetuating as well. It's like none of this is really helping anyone. It's... It's just like, both of them were in the wrong, un unquestionably. Neither of them were right, neither of them, like, you get their points. Like, again, th what they were trying to do wasn't in inherently wrong, but both of their actions and the their refusal to listen to each other was wrong. Because this dude was just trying to have a natural cultural ceremony for his past mother. That's perfectly reasonable. And as long as the flames are watched, then nothing will happen to the camp. But that's all the architect was worried about. She was just worried that, oh, this camp is going to go up in flames if you have an open fire. And it's like, talk to each other. Communicate! Ugh. So many problems would be solved if people just communicated with each other. If people actually stopped, st just stopped trying to assert themselves, listen to others, and actually, you know, talk things through, we wouldn't have issues like this. But no, people have to be so fucking prideful, so fucking just in their own heads, that they can't think for one fucking second and understand that the world does not revolve around them. I see this kind of shit every day online and uh, just in news stories and everything and it's like so this kind of thing just bothers the shit out of me when people do this it's it's very realistic and i hate that it's very realistic and it's just i i i get so i i get so heated just hearing people go through this shit hearing or seeing people go through this shit it's it's such an easy fix it's such an easy fix, but people are too fucking stupid. 
And unfortunately, this incident's probably going to only make matters worse. And with Erevos coming in, it's not going to help. It's like, can we just let the gays marry already? It's like, we don't have to have all this conflict here. We really don't. You don't have to throw in conflict. You can have them marry. Yes, in real life, there's been a lot of conflict surrounding gay marriage. It's, it's real, sure. But you don't have to have that. This is a fantasy cartoon. Let them marry without all the conflict. Let it be fantasy for a second. Let us have this for God's sake. <clears throat> I'm not mad at the show or anything. I want to make that clear. I'm not I'm not upset at the show or the writers or anything. I'm just again, it's just this stuff gets me heated, especially the the gay marriage stuff because, you know, personal connection and shit. Um even if I'm not married yet. Um but still it's just, we just don't need to see this. It, it bothers me, okay? But it's supposed to, mind you. Like, that's, that's definitely the intention. And so it's doing a damn good job at that. I can say that much. Oh, too good of a job at it. Uh, things are definitely going to get worse before they get better, though. That that much is very clear, and it's gonna it's gonna be hard to watch. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes as we continue along. For the time being, uh, tell me in the comments below what did you think of this episode of the Dragon Prince. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.